Good morning, my radiant disco ball of juiciness. So this is day two of reading this book, The Inner Work, to try and <clears throat> figure out these emotions that I have. Why am I, why do I not feel happy? Like at very, at very surface level, like from what I understand, I'm not happy because um, I don't have like the consistent income and the means to live the life that I really want to live, that I that, like my wife and my kids deserve, that I want to be able to provide for them. That sounds <clears throat> super deep and almost silly, but just quickly, I feel like I have a responsibility to my, we'll get on some content stuff in a minute, but I think the reason that I'm struggling so much in my content journey, journey, is because I haven't figured this part out. I want to provide a life for my family. And I, I have all the things, we have all the things that we need to be happy. The way I see it right now is we just don't have the income to uh, do those things in a more enjoyable way. By that I mean, how do I mean that? Like Shay and I haven't been on a proper vacation, just the two of us in, I, I don't think since our honeymoon. Like every vacation has been like traveling home to like my family, which isn't really, it's not really a vacation. It's more like to be there to see family. So I've decided that I'm gonna do 12 videos. I'll do 12 like short form videos of just my learnings from each day. In addition to that, the positive affirmations thing, I think would be, I think would be really good for me. Like I, I've seen a lot of stuff about how beneficial being positive, like saying positive things to yourself is, not just for the saying positive things for yourself, but like the realization that some of those things that should be positive affirmations, like to me just sounds stupid, sounds so dumb, and it seems pathetic to say them out loud, but there are also some of them that I just don't believe to be true in my life. And so I'm going to make a Apple shortcut. I've like done half of it through uh, while I was at the gym and <clears throat> I'm going to have it pop up each morning and ask me each of the affirmations. I don't know if there are 20 or 30 of them. And then I'm just going to provide an input, a yes or a no, which is going to track on a daily basis what is my thought on each of those affirmations do i believe it to be true or do i still think it's stupid and don't believe in it and then at the end of 12 days or the end of the month if i do it every day i can start to see the progress across each of those as i start to unearth more about myself and figure out which one is actually true and just, yeah, just understand more about who I am. So hopefully, you know, you might find that useful to follow along too. Um, and go along from there. I've also, I uh, have, that doesn't help you, does it? Like I've been highlighting bits that I think are particularly useful, like a standout, bits for me to really think about again. Okay, so how does that help me on my content journey? Well, I had a chat with Shay last night and recently what's been quite good actually is because Shay and I don't have, we're not really spending any time together. We're always shifting responsibilities. And so I'm actually doing a day in the life video today of what it's like like having a kid in the intensive care unit and what it's like for a couple with a kid because it's, 
it's wild and I feel really f empathize as much as I can with families that have kids in like an ICU for example for months at a time it's tough so hopefully that will be quite interesting to watch um, but we were having a conversation last night and I was saying I even mentioned it in the end of yesterday's pod vlog how I've this is a very negative view on it and I need to change this I've almost set myself up for failure like I've, I've put myself in a place where every bit video has been doing so well and now anything that doesn't do that well is a flop and is a failure to me and I need to stop thinking about that I've always been thinking about TikTok as if it doesn't stay on the for you page it's it's a failure and you've heard me talk so many times about how I don't think followers matter on TikTok. And I'm starting to think a bit differently about that. I'm starting to think once a video stops on the For You page, like let's say, even if I consider it a failure because it stopped on the For You page, it still then starts being shown to my followers. And I've never really taken the time to see this isn't the right way to put it i don't think how many views does a video get if it just is viewed by my followers like does it does it still get to like 50 60k or does it cap out at 10k so i think we're going to put this goes back to the idea last night of Let's just do, let's just make, like dedicate the time to just making videos. Forget about virality, you know, make videos to the best of my ability, but forget about them doing well. Forget about the pressures of that and just think about making a video. Did I enjoy making that video? Did it touch on the things that I think are valuable and useful as a piece of content for people to watch for entertainment? If so, cool happy with that regardless of the view counts and then maybe once a week or once every two weeks I can take a chance to review those videos look at what did well what didn't do well and take learnings from those as opposed to seeing a video and then checking every single video and over analyzing it and then trying to make changes immediately I think I need to take a step back and look at it more uh, at a wider view instead of video by video. I think that would really help me. Okay. Also, so we're going to do that for the next 12 days. A bar weekends, maybe. Well, I guess at the moment, a weekend is basically the same as a weekday for me for both of us because we're still going to the hospital there and back. You know what sucks too is I had set time aside to be able to be there and spend time with family once we had Kobe. You know, to be there at home to not only spend time with Kobe and Rugi, but to help out Shay. But I we used up some of that slack and I don't ha we don't have that luxury at the moment so it's kind of as soon as Kobe comes home that's the moment that I have time to be able to work and I have to take advantage of that for better or, or for worse okay so one of the other thoughts I had last night about content was and it, I guess it kind of it starts with this book what products are on TikTok shop that aren't super scammy products that I could actually start adding into my videos and maybe get some commission from if I make it, you know, enough that the viewer wants to maybe purchase the product from what I've said in the video. I'm not, I'm not going into a selling approach, but I, <clears throat> my pride has been in the way of using TikTok shop. And I feel like I'm not, I'm not testing the waters with it. I'm not experimenting with it. I'm, 
And why am I not experiment experimenting with it? Because my pride, like this idea that, hell no, I'm not going to use TikTok shop. I'm not one of those people. So it's going to start off with this and see where it goes. I had a conversation the other day about TikTok shop and big brands trying to get into TikTok shop. And <clears throat> I found an account yesterday of a girl. Her only videos are about this one product. And I saw that she just made crazy, she generated crazy amounts of income from conversions, which have given her crazy commissions from this product. But it kind of unveils the type of creator you have these days, which is you have creators that are making content to sell stuff. We'll call that maybe a selfish, I don't know if I want to use that term, but we'll call that a selfish content creation mindset. And then you have, let's say my type of mindset for content just because I'm so much better than everyone else, which is more like making a video as a gift to people, making something so that people can enjoy a, a piece of content. Like you're not doing it necessary to sell anything. You're not doing it to, you know, for <clears throat> those selfish reasons, which I'm sure like there is some selfish underlying reason but the main goal is to entertain someone. And so it's like, I made this thing for you to enjoy versus I made this thing so that you purchase the product and I get some money off of it. I don't, I don't love thinking about the viewer as a, uh, as the product. Is that right? I don't love thinking about you as, what am I trying to say? I mean, I've said it before, I don't like the idea of like selling to you. There are in parts that I feel like I would be selling for things that I really use, things that really help me. Like I would have, I mean, depending on how this keeps going so far it's been great as things keep going i would recommend that you buy this not <clears throat> not necessarily so that i make generate some level of revenue off of it but if it's helped me then i would really like that to be able to help you you know if you're having going through similar struggles all right, that's enough yapping for now. I'm going to chill with Kovi for a bit, make, some, make this shortcut, think through how I'm going to just like write, you know, just a general script about my thoughts from this morning and yesterday. And then I will speak to you. You know what, maybe I'll just record my thoughts as I think through this while I'm sitting with Kovi if he's asleep. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Lovely jubbly. Look, I just want to, I'm just going to say it as I, as Shay and I would talk about it. The majority of women's sports, neither her nor I find it interesting to watch. I don't care about whether that's the right or wrong thing to say. I just don't find it entertaining. Good if people find it entertaining. Anyway. Where'd that come from, Oliver? She just, she was watching one of her, she just came home, started watching one of her niece's games, and she said to Ruga, come on over, Ruga, and we'll put it on the TV, because she was just watching it on her phone. And the mention of the TV, he gets cartoons on Friday mornings, and he's been, when we shifted him off of Miss Rachel, he landed on Curious George. And so, when he wants Curious George, he says, ee, 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 ee. 
like a monkey or like Curious George does. And my wife says, oh, we're not watching Curious George, we're watching, like, her name's basketball. And it's like, uh, B, what's well, C team women's high school girls basketball. And like for attention spans for kids, I said to Shay, if he can sit through that game, he can sit through anything. He's actually really good at sitting through long books. Just because we try and read to him as much as we can. I know Shay does already. She does most of it during the day. All right, I had this. Oh, and I made the comment of, yeah, that, so if he could sit through it, and I would just, number one, I thought I'd share that with you because I thought that was funny and to like give you a sense of my kind of sense of humor. But also, that's something I see my dad saying. I'm sure I've seen him say something like that hundreds of times. What does this sound? Anyway. I started, I don't know why this thought came to mind. I, I must have subconsciously seen a younger kid in a nice car. But I thought, I think as I get older, I've gone through transitional phases of understanding why wealthy people buy their kids nice cars. I used to not understand it at all. I was like, that's so stupid. And then I got to a place of, I can understand how someone may want to, I call it an insecurity maybe, may want to also have their kids look good, like in nice cars, because it's part of their ego, their pride. It's a pretty negative look on it, but there's that. But now, <clears throat> it's like having a child, you want, it would be nice to give them nice things like to have that experience. Like you always see, like in American movies, the kid that has the nice car is always the, um, he's always from a wealthy family. And there are, he always seems to be the cool kid. Yeah, he often seems to be the bully, which I guess is probably an indication of what's going on here. But that would be, I feel like that would be a cool experience to be able to provide your child with I mean, that's all surface level, which is a shame. But, you know, even a small thing like that it might be quite nice to have. Okay, all of it, content, because that's what this is meant to be about. <laughs> I, at the um, hospital, I filmed part one of the like, journey, you know, to being more happy. And I've realized, like, as I was figuring out what it, the topic would be, I realized that it would be, I guess, I'll just play it for you now. This is day one of my 11-day journey to actually becoming happy, where I think money is the problem. You know those street interviews where a person gets asked, are you happy? I think that was the start of all of this, but I'm glad it was. So I got this book, and so far it's been amazing. So my goal is to read a chapter a day and then kind of share my thoughts and the things that I've learned from it and hopes it helps you too. Like I'm confident in myself, but I know I'm always learning. But to find happiness, this book says it has little to do with other people, circumstances or conditions and has everything to do with what's going on inside us. So it's like, what am I chasing to be happy? I have a borderline trad wife, two psycho kids. And after the last eight years, I finally was able to achieve my dream job or goal of making videos about fun experiences for a living. But why do I have this feeling like I'm still failing my family? And I think like most millennials, it's money. We make enough, but it doesn't feel like enough. And I think my goal over this journey is to alter the power I give money over my happiness. Here we go. But the desire to get someplace else will only keep us stuck in a perpetual cycle of wanting happiness rather than actualizing it. So how the hell do I actualize happiness? Just forget about feeding my family? I think this book is a tool to help me learn and then I can share my journey with you. And in the meantime, I guess I'll just focus on enjoying time with my family and making videos that I'm proud of. So it's super basic. Uh, I thought about, I could have put lots more footage over the top 
like for Shea being, when I say the trad wife, you know, psycho kids, I could have, you know, done some of that stuff, but I just didn't feel like it needed it. And it's the first time in a long time that I've gone with the feeling of, I didn't feel like it needed it versus the opposite side of that, which is, I feel like it needs this, like to do better. And I think I'm right in the, when I say it needs this to do better, to perform better, I think I'm right, not every time obviously, but I think I'm right in doing that. But there are also something I just like realized there are also times when it doesn't need to be that style. Like it can just be whatever you think is right. I started this video with two of three bars left and it's already on saying it's about to be empty. 